Those, those are dolls! Those, those are dolls! dolls. Those are dolls. <laughs> yeah. So this isn't some random dude. This is pretending to be Ryan Reynolds as the super buff guy. They were like, here's what we filmed, and then we deleted it. Did you guys stop watching the foreground characters and just start looking at the background? Thanks to Vessi for sponsoring this video. Stick around so you can see how you can get $25 off your order today. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artists React. I'm joined by Ren and Sam, and we got some great clips to look at today. We got Space Jam, we have Darby O'Gillian and the Little People. What? That's, that's Darby, what a Darby title. Darby O'Gillian. Darby. Just you wait. Also, Loki is finally completely released on Disney Plus, so we are finally gonna be diving into that. You know, it's a really exciting time for movies because in the last two weeks, I've seen two movies in theaters and it's awesome. I saw Black Widow and I saw Old just for the fun of it. Does anybody get old? Oh, <laughs> they get old. <laughs> old F. Old F. <laughs> oh old boy. All right, let's watch some clips. You picked up the Tesseract breaking reality. I want you to help us fix it. I haven't seen Loki yet. Loki is great. Honestly, I think it's my favorite Marvel show they've made yet. I'm a sucker for time loops and time messing stuff, so Loki was a lot of fun, but there's a CG character in the show that is inspired by very old timey cartoon effects. And it was really interesting what they had to do to bring this character to life. And that would lead to the destruction of the timeline and the collapse of reality as we know it. There's lighting. Yeah, there's interactive lighting. Oh, is the desk completely CG? <laughs> Watch it, where's your manners? Oh, hey, quit it! So one of the challenges they found for this was trying to marry the real world photography in camera with the digital version of Miss Minutes because she's transparent. They actually had this really cool little LED light system that they had that they would actually move around to get the interactive lighting on the set but then they would have to paint out that light. And what people don't realize is it's not just simply a matter of painting out a light. Yeah, like they're filming it in a dim office. Like yeah. you're setting yourself up for a challenge. They went through a lot of effort just to recreate the background so that it looks normal. And then they would relight it after the fact. So I don't actually know how useful this light ended up being mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Look at the actual color quality on the ground, on the light around it, and then look at the final thing. Oh, it's just a new shot. It's all CG. It's basically a new shot. Yeah, exactly. Hold on. I don't know. I don't know what they're saying, but what I'm seeing is they're like, "Here's what we filmed, and then we deleted it." <laughs> no, that's exactly it. It was purely for reference. You can see her reflection on the tea kettle. And then when they show the actual light that they built, it's a completely different reflection. So they end up having to recreate so much of what you see. You know, that's the thing. We're always talking about the best looking images are when you combine practical and digital. The problem is that it usually doesn't work as seamlessly or as well as you might imagine it should. At the very least, you get the lighting on Tom Hiddleston. That is true. One last thing from Loki that I want to touch on is this idea of blue screening anything. That looks like a tough blue screen right there. Granted, this is probably taken on a less high quality camera than the one they're filming with. The sensor is probably going, whoa, that's a lot of blue and making it look like way crazier than it does in the footage. That's a good point. That might actually be the case. If I was sent the shot to key out the blue, but I got to keep the ground, I got to keep the people. What do you do? You cut it out by hand. Cut it out by hand. That's the answer. When it comes to keying something, it's usually a whole bunch of talented roto artists. Yeah. They're going in and they're making very accurate and detailed track mats the same way that we've done for a hundred years. If they tried to swap that out with a green screen, yeah, it'd be easier to key out, but now you're introducing trouble with a green spill. So by keeping it blue, yes, it's going to require a little bit more manual work, but the end result is going to look better. I think there's over 500 shots just in episode five. Every shot is basically movie level caliber. They're all pretty impressive. I mean, Disney probably went, you have $10,000 per second. And they're sitting there looking at every second of footage, but like, I have $10,000, you want to try to make this one second better? They did that for every second of the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how much money is that? That's a lot of money. I think that might be a little more money than you can handle. Let's find out actually. 50 times 60 times 60 times $10,000. 1.8 billion, a little high. Let's knock that down. <laughs> thousand dollars per second. <laughs> the most expensive movie ever made. <laughs> I, I do find it pretty fascinating though that the entire budget for Loki was around 150 million dollars and that's the budget of a pretty big blockbuster movie. 150 million in production costs. They actually might have been more expensive. Wait, do the math real quick on production. 
a thousand dollars per second for fifty-five minutes. Hey Siri, one hundred and fifty. Is one hundred and fifty. Four thousand dollars episode is fifty-five minutes. I was saying six thousand five hundred. No, I already did that. Wait, no, 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 hold up. No, look, each episode is thirty-five seconds. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. How long are your episodes? Fifty minutes. Fifty minutes. So it's five hundred thousand dollars. So then divided by sixty. 8,333. I know. It was 8,000. It's almost $10,000 a second. I call oh, it. You just did the math gut. wrong. You just did the math wrong. No, I didn't. I got the same. I got the exact same number you did. No, no, I know. But before when you got the 1 billion number, your thumb slipped or something. <laughs> yeah. When I gut guessed it was $10,000 a second, I actually was not that far Okay, off. so anyways, full circle, Nico's right. We are so beyond VFX artists react right now. No, Look, this VFX is... artists have to deal with money. This is totally VFX artists react. I can be honest. There's a part of me that hates how expensive this stuff is. Yeah, it's, uh... You're just jealous. I'm me too. <laughs> What's happening? Bump up the jam. Space Jam. A new legacy. I have not seen this movie yet. I used to like the original Space Jam, and then I actually rewatched it and was disappointed by how it didn't hold up. This means war. So I am noticing that the furry cartoon characters have a nice little layer of fur, but all the skin characters doesn't quite look like properly skin shaded, like maybe slightly lacking a little bit. I, I don't know. How cartoon. gross and weird would it look like if the cartoon characters had this like fleshy, <laughs> translucent skin? They have to have that toy feel, I feel like. Listen, Bron Bron, this is basketball, but with a spin to it. Does seeing all the CG characters, does it feel like that kind of takes it away from the cartoon aspect of things? Well, in the original Space Jam, there's a bit of a technological marvel with it, where it was Michael Jordan, who was a human being, in a cartoon world for most of it, and eventually cartoons joining him on the court, which is a bit of Roger Rabbit kind of thing. Yeah, totally. It's a pretty big deal, like, from a visual effects standpoint. At this point, not that big of a deal. When LeBron James goes to Toon World, he becomes a cartoon also. There is no photoreal LeBron James with cartoon characters. They just skip that entirely. He's got 100% he just went straight cartoon? Rabbit season. All right, yeah. Now say, I'm hot and wild. Oh, there's your Chungus. Dude, they actually put Big <laughs> Chungus in the movie? Did we just catch this one glimpse of him being a Chungus? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's a reference. And, and you know what else is brilliant? This ball oh, movement, man. The visual effects are great, but there's so much happening that it makes it really hard to find a focus to the scene because I'm trying to watch the characters and they look awesome. It's just like, holy crap, there is so much happening. It's like almost a visual overload. Did you guys stop watching the foreground characters and just start looking at the background? Oh my God, there are so many characters in is the this, background. Is this basically just Ready Player One, but with basketball? Ready Player Basketball? A and with only Warner Brothers franchises. Yeah. There's the Wicked Witch, there's the clown from It. Oh hey, it's them. The family even came. <laughs> Space Jam has decent visual effects in it, but there is, in my opinion, a miscalculation here. So, so, movie crowds. Generally, for the most part, the job with crowds is you just want an anonymous mass of people in the background. But what if you go, hey, what if I pick as many popular characters as I can and just sprinkle them throughout the crowd so that the audience is just playing Where's Waldo with the crowd the whole time? What that does is it makes you immediately go, well, I'm going to stop watching the foreground. I'm going to start watching the background. And all the little tricks that you can do for a crowd suddenly break down. For example, oh. in the background, watch eye lines and watch hype levels. Right Come here, bunny. Got you. So Penguin, he's not looking at any of the action. Well, maybe he's noticing other characters he recognizes on the other <laughs> side of the board. Everybody is hyped 100% the entire time. It just doesn't stop. Everyone's always cheering, even when people are quiet on the sidelines. People are screaming and clapping. You're right. I, it's funny because I'm trying to like look at the characters, but I'm more interested in the people they're featuring. Yeah. <laughs> Like, there's that monkey in the background dancing. That's who I'm looking at. Yeah, the other thing is that you have to populate hundreds, if not thousands, of 3D models of people for all of those extras in the background, just so that you can then blur them all out of focus. Yeah. This is a whole third of the movie, basically. I spent the entire scene just looking at the background. I forgot entirely what happened in, in actual foreground of the camera here. Yo, I didn't that's see replay anything. value. That's replay value, yeah. But like, I wonder though, isn't that the fun part of this movie is noticing all those? I mean, I like trying to spot these characters. I do too, I do too. It's just, it's an odd choice. So you might be able to tell which aliens are fake in Space Jam, but can you tell which aliens are fake in the Pentagon UFO videos that were recently released? Sam and I sat down to apply our visual effects artist eye to see if we could debunk and explain the UFO videos. This video is coming out tomorrow on this channel. Tune back in then or subscribe so you don't miss it.
So here we have Darby O'Gill and the Little People. This is a movie about a man who I think catches a leprechaun and gets like wishes and all that kind of stuff. And here he is in their kingdom and he's gonna play them some music and they're gonna have a good old time. Wait, you're, t you're telling me his wish was to rule the kingdom of leprechauns? I don't know. You'll have to watch the movie to find out. <laughs> Away we go. One, two, three, four. Look at that cutie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh! Oh! Uh oh! Whoa. That's crazy! Wait what? <laughs> Wait what? No green screens. Oh! 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 oh. It's getting crazier. <laughs> Dude, he's fiddling so hard. It's like I brought you a magical instrument from the human realm, and they all like <laughs> my bodies. <laughs> we can't control them. What, what is happening? <laughs> what are you doing to us? <laughs> I won't stop playing until you give me your gold. <laughs> I mean, are we seeing a bunch of like forced perspective stuff? Let's talk about forced perspective real quick. So in order to make somebody look big and somebody else look small back in the day before you could just cut people out and move them around in your screen into a computer, you basically need to have your one actor be close to the camera and the other actors be far away because at the end of the day, the camera is just giving you a two-dimensional image. You can't look at the image and tell what's close and far outside of just the cues of what you're looking at on screen. So you can fake it. So that's how they had to approach this because, you know, you don't have green screens, you don't have computers. They can do matting where they can cut something out and stick it in the frame, but that doesn't really let you move around. You can force perspective this one where you have him really close to the camera and then a large set in the background. But watch as he walks off. This shot's amazing. If you're going to do force perspective with this, there's going to be a seam in your set. There would be a cutoff there of a platform that's raised up and closer to us and then like a larger floor that's in the background. So what they did is they actually designed their set to have these streaks painted on it and they matched oh. the paint lines from the little platform close to the camera to the platform behind the camera. Same thing with this. Pause it right there. Oh, I see it! Yep, I you saw see, it! You see right this the behind the corner? That's really well and lined up! They're using the curvature of the rock to motivate the seam a little bit there. You can really see the edges once you start looking for it. But I love this. It's so cool. Okay, but what about that shot? I think this is just a mat. That's gotta be a matted shot. Because it's gotta be a matted shot can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do you that. You can't do that. But the thing is, for this to be a matted shot, it means that he didn't just go stand there on the set, because that part of the set is like, that's like a <gasps> 50 foot high ceiling. Wait a minute. What if he's on a platform that's hanging in the center of a room? He could be, because you think, how tall would that ceiling have to be? And how much work would he have to put into that ceiling to build that? I think that's not a real ceiling. I think that's a matte painting. And if that's a matte painting, that means that he could be standing on scaffolding and the matte painting is just covering the entire scaffolding. Oh, right is this the behind here. the scenes for that? Yep, that's totally a freaking platform. So the dolls in the foreground. Those are, probably dolls! Those, those are dolls! dolls! Those are dolls! Yeah. <laughs> they're just rotating them. That's they're all just they're just on sticks! <laughs> oh, show us how it was done, please. Please. Hold on. Oh, we're, we're piecing the piece. It's yeah! a mirror! It's a mirror! It's a mirror! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about mirrors! mirrors! That's all dolls and mirrors! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> wow! It oh, was a mirror! It's not just a mirror, it's a mirror where they cut a hole through the mirror. There's no mats at all. This is all 100% in camera. This wow. is insane. And there's a matte painting too, the ceiling and the stalactites and stuff. Also painted on glass in front of the mirror, right off the front of the camera. It makes total sense now. We gotta keep that in our back pocket. Each time we see these old things, we're like, it could be a mirror now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I yeah. forgot about mirrors. I completely forgot about mirrors as a legit trick. <laughs> Here he is, the little do So Ryan Reynolds has a new movie out called Free Guy, and what I like about what Ryan Reynolds does with the marketing is that he takes an untraditional approach. Instead of doing a classic trailer, you know, he does this thing where it's like, it starts out as a trailer and then turns into an interview with a monstrosity. And uh, Nico, I wanted to get your opinion on this shot. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't have time for that. I've been at this one week. <laughs> wow. So this isn't some random dude. This is pretending to be Ryan Reynolds as the super buff guy. Is that just prosthetic or is that a deep fake? Because it kind of looks like a deep fake every once in a while. So here's the first thing we can look at. Let's watch his Adam's apple. And I gotta tell you, it's coming in nicely. It's just staying it's still. Moving. It's not moving. Oh, it's not moving anymore. Ren, say some words. This is me pretending to be Ryan Reynolds because we look exactly the same and I am talking now and you can see my Adam's apple. <clears throat> For this to be a deep fake, the muscular dude needs to be doing the performance. Because a deep fake is just a mask. It isn't actually somebody else's performance pasted on your face. It's your performance, you just are wearing a mask. And therefore, you would see evidence, like in this Adam's apple, of it moving as these lines are coming out. In this shot, we see it. In that shot, we see it. In the first shot, we don't. But it's, it's not quite lined up. That is the reason why I think it's not a deep fake, because that would mean the actor, whoever this buff dude is, 
is having to not only deliver the same lines that Ryan Reynolds is going to have to say, he's going to have to say at the exact same timing, in the exact same inflection. And now mm -hmm. that means Ryan Reynolds' famous charisma is now locked into whatever this bodybuilder is doing with his face. But watch the facial performance. It's not that crazy. I feel like you could totally just go, hey, we need a buff dude who can like do a couple jokes. I, I feel like that's totally possible because the motion on the face, it's like, yeah, it could be like a 2D, semi 3D track, but it looks like a deep fake. It looks like the facial motion you see in a deep fake. It does look like a deep fake. I'm going to guess that it's not a deep fake. My reason for that is I think what they did here is they just filmed Ryan Reynolds locked off, directly facing camera, very little perspective changes, and he just does all his performance, and then they paste that face onto this guy and deal with a little bit of morphing and stretching to make like the jawline move and stuff like that. Still really well done, and the fact that we're even discussing it like this is, you know, especially for a quick little promo piece, commercial, it's like, yeah, yeah. not bad. Real quick though, there's another video that they did for the Marketing for Free Guy that I feel is particularly relevant to this show. Well, hello there, and what's up, Reaction Faction? It's Deadpool. I'll be reacting to a trailer for a movie which I honestly thought came out like a year ago. Wow. I would like to think that this is like a shout out to us, but there's plenty of other reactions. Yeah, there's lots of react formats out there. We are not original in any regard. However, it is kind of cool to see a similar format being used in marketing for this. I do feel like there's only one react show out there where it just has a straight up couch in the middle of the shot. Maybe they're joking about us. <laughs> Maybe they're having a laugh. Ryan, I know you're watching this right now. We're talking about your movie. I know you're seeing this. If you want to talk about this more, hit us up and you can sit on this couch with us and maybe we can look at the Green Lantern and you can clarify what you've been wanting to clarify for a long time. Yeah, exactly. You can come on our show. You can sit in this seat right here, Ren. Uh, he'll, we, he'll, we, he'll we can go make there. room. We can make room. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, remember me? About a week ago, I'm back again to tell you about our sponsor, Bessie. Vessi is a shoe that can go anywhere and do anything. I personally use Vessi every day to work out. It doesn't matter if I'm outside and it's raining or I'm inside. It doesn't matter if I'm outside hiking and it's dry and dirty and dusty because I can just hose them off in the backyard. Vessi's are 100% waterproof, not water resistant. So they're super easy to clean. Just throw them in the wash or maybe hose them down in the backyard and just let them dry. To prove that they're waterproof. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. One of my favorite things about Vessies is they're sustainably made. They use less material, less water, and no animal byproduct. That means they're vegan. Vessies are made with Dymatex, a dual climate knit, which keeps you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. I can just slip my shoes on and off like socks. I barely feel them on my feet. They're super lightweight and breathable. Sometimes I forget they're even on. It doesn't matter where you go, Vessies has you covered. Oh. So do we. Click the link in the description below so you can get $25 for each pair of Vessies you buy. You can get one for every member of the family. Anyways, enjoy the rest of this video and I'll probably see you next week because I'm coming for Jake's job. So we actually got the suggestion for looking at Free Guy from the comments of these videos. So if you are Ryan Reynolds, leave a comment down below or come onto the show and we'll, you know, choose something from that. And if you're not Ryan Reynolds, and you just have a cool shot you want us to react to, go ahead and leave a comment down below too. Also, old VFX, I want more of them. There's some great suggestions before. Bed knobs and broomsticks, that's one of my favorites. That's my like my ace in my pocket. Bed knobs and broomsticks? Yeah, see, these guys don't know what it is yet. They have not seen Nazis fighting reanimated knights in armor. Okay, I'm intrigued now. There you go. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. This was a really fun one to do. Dude, those tiny people blew my mind. Tiny people, big results. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. We'll see you guys in the next VFX Artist React.